The first gaming keyboard I ever bought was the Logitech G15 back in 2003. Wait a minute, that was 20 years ago? Unfortunately, I don't have it in my possession anymore, but I also did get this one, the G19, which you see here. Interestingly, this was not only the second gaming keyboard I ever got, but also the very last one. I don't really remember what I was using in between. To be honest, it was probably a variety of office-centric keyboards, as my playtime was severely reduced during that time of my life, as studies and jobs became more and more dominant. But when I was using these, the purpose was to dominate the battlefield, and in those days, this was mostly the planes of Lineage 2. Anybody remember that? I was on a server called Seacard, which I believe some people thought was the one with the hard sieges because, you know, it was called, well, Siege Hard, I guess? Well, it was, at least for me, because, well, I was very terrible at Lineage 2. Anyway, the board allowed me to use its extra keys, the on-the-fly macro programmability, and the little display to get the upper hand while sporting a detachable wrist rest for maximum comfort during those very, very long hours of grinding. But why am I talking about this 20 year old game and keyboard when this video is about something completely new? Well, it's because this gaming keyboard has absolutely none of those 20 year old features. It doesn't even have any extra keys out of the 75% form factor, there is no macro programmability, there is no display, and heck, you can't even detach the wrist rest. So it's a terrible gaming keyboard, right? Well, it depends. Let's start off by looking at the exterior and how this thing is put together to get a better idea of what we're dealing with. Called the Black Diamond 75 Mithril by Dry Studio, a new company, although it is an offspring of Angry Meow, a well known manufacturer of expensive peripherals with rather unusual designs, and the Black Diamond 75 is no exception. There are four versions of this board, the Mithril Advance, which is the one I got, the Mithril Base, which looks exactly the same but lacks the front LEDs under the wrist rest, and the wireless charging, which is a feature found on many other Angry Meow boards. There is also a Carbon Advance as well as a Carbon Base model. Both of those will have the same difference between them as the Mithril Advance and Base have, that is no front LEDs and no wireless charging for the base version. However, the Carbon version is also tooted as having a focus on maximum esports performance versus daily use combined with gaming news for the mithril variants. I'll get to why that makes little sense later, but for now just know that the carbon version features, well, a lot of carb and also comes with different switches. The mithril has the KTT Wine Red Linears, which can also be purchased separately, while the carbon has DR Rapid Eye switches, which were exclusively developed for the Black Diamond together with Gateron and feature an actuation distance of just 1mm. The only other difference is the material choice for the leaf springs, whereas the mithril has softer, phosphorus copper leaves, the carbon has a harder typing experience with its stainless steel variant. But enough of those different models, let's study this thing. First to be noticed is the unusual design, at least for me, including the semi-transparent construction as well as the integrated wrist rest. There's been a recent obsession with transparent tech in the world. I'm not sure if nothing is responsible for this, but they were certainly among the first mainstream brands to push this as a new idea. In the keyboard space, however, I feel this has been around for longer and isn't entirely unusual. There are quite a few other boards that feature some sort of transparent housing, but I'd say that the Black Diamond pushes this to new extremes, as it mixes precisely machined aluminum parts with these fully transparent acrylic panels. This gives you insight into the inner workings in a way that I haven't seen before. For example, the leaf spring mounting system can be clearly observed during operation, showing off the very nice and consistent bounce of this board. Grace Duda says that the design was inspired by the Lamborghini Aventador, specifically the Carbonado version from Mansory. Carbonado is actually the name for one of the toughest forms of natural diamonds, also known as Black Diamond. Interesting stuff, and I'd say apart from the lack of any wings, the resemblance is certainly there. More so than anywhere else, you can spot this at the wrist rest, with its included LED lines that looks a lot like a Lambo from the front. It's definitely polarizing to stare at, and heavy too at around 6.5 pounds or just over 3 kilos. There are no brass weights in here, but the sheer size of this aluminum body is enough to give this board its heft. 
But have no fear, because unlike the last Angry Meow board I reviewed, where I ironically complained about the fact that I had difficulty picking it up, this one's side are specifically designed for that, or as Grey Studio puts it, grasp handles on the sides for smooth keyboard movement when the battle situation gets too fierce while gaming. I'd say if you need to move this thing around during a fierce battle situation, you're probably going to have bigger issues than finding love handles to grasp onto. I'm usually all for minimalism, but there are instances every now and then where I go against this, where my taste buds will accept the unusual, and this is certainly one of those cases. Whether or not this will stand the test of time though, well, it's another story. For now, let's take a peek inside this thing to see if it is well put together as it looks. There are a few things I want to mention before I start ripping it apart. Technically, this is a pre-build, as it comes fully assembled, including switches and keycaps. In fact, you can't buy this without those. It's a set, if you will. However, as stated, or at least I think I said something along those lines in my Angry Meow Compact Touch video, this board is a custom through and through. There are no proprietary parts here. We got standard switches, MX style caps with cherry profiles, and standard stabilizers from Gatoron. What you can modify here is what you can modify on any other custom. It just happens to come pre-assembled. That being said, this board is unfortunately not VIA or QMK compatible and has its own software suite, the same as other Angry Meow keyboards. I must also note that from all the boards I've had a chance to play around with until now, this one is by far the most complex in terms of construction. There are a lot of individual parts here that make modifications a little bit more tedious, but enough talk. Let's start so you get an idea of what I mean. From the outside, there are six brass washers accompanied by black torque screws that need to be removed first. Be very careful on the way back when you attach these again. Even though Dry Studio states that this is hardened acrylic, they will crack under pressure, so be very careful to not over tighten these. Once they are removed, we can take off the first aluminum panels, which have neat labels on the inside so you can easily tell where they need to go. Dry Studio also notes that you shouldn't use alcohol to clean this to avoid damaging the material, and it is supposed to have good level of scratch resistance at a hardness level of 3H. To put that into perspective, if you ever watched any of Jerry Rick Everything's videos, where he takes it out on phones and other gadgets, level 3 comes quite early and your phone screen most likely has a hardness level between 5 and 6. But I'm not Jerry and I don't Rick stuff, I'm more of an Alan to be honest. Confused about that. Anyhow, once we got those panels away, we can take a look at the wrist rest, which has two convenient torque screws right at the top, showcasing its industrial design inspiration. This is easily removed and reveals, unfortunately, that the board cannot be used without the wrist rest because it's part of the entire underside. Now, this is nothing bad, as the wrist rest does make typing on the 7 degree angle very comfortable, and as it is one piece, does not result in multiple parts on your desk shifting around over time. But it also means that you'll need the space to accompany this board. In fact, my first reaction when I unboxed this was You're gonna need a bigger boat. Inside we'll find a neat white PCB that controls the LEDs, attached to a ribbon cable that can also be removed with a couple of screws, and the LED diffuser that kinda works like a sewer system to move the RGB vomit to the sides. Quite effectively, I must say, it's actually a pretty cool pool of RGB vomit. While we're talking about those pesky lights, the board features full per-key RGB that can be customized using Angry Meow software. There are a bunch of presets you can configure and the front LEDs can be controlled separately as well as being turned off completely. If you move up, we can remove the four additional torque screws to open up the lid to the engine. One thing that I wonder is how much dirt and little bits of skin will collect in here over time. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it's been holding up quite well, but if you're somebody who eats a lot at your desk, maybe think twice before getting one of these, unless you plan to frequently open this one up and do some vacuum. After that, we are actually already at the PCB level, where we can remove the keyboard part by separating the two ribbon cables underneath it. This board in general reminds me a lot of the compact touch. It shares quite a few design inspirations on the inside, including the FR4 plate as well as the leaf spring mounting system. There's a glued on layer of foam on the underside, which I won't remove, as well as an additional layer between the PCB and the plate. Quite a dense combination, and from what I can tell, the PCB has no flex cuts. However, there are some on the plate, but they don't affect the bendability of the board that much. In general, the flex is very consistent, with the corners bouncing back just a tad bit more. If we dig in deeper, we got a very big piece of silicone with a honeycomb pattern on top. Dry Studio says that this is to reduce vibrations and mitigate a hollow sound signature. I'll let you be the judge on that in a minute. 
Underneath it, we can spot the wireless charging pad, the included 5000 mAh battery, which is huge, the wireless antennas for the Bluetooth, and 2.4 GHz dongle, as well as a daughter board connecting everything together. Speaking of the battery, the board should last for around 75 days, at a usage of around 8 hours per day. I never got to that limit, and judging from the drain, it seems to live up to that claim. If you happen to use the latest version of macOS, where you can place widgets on your desktop, the keyboard will actually show up as well, which is pretty neat. As mentioned, it shares quite a few elements with the compact touch, like the cable-less connection points used on the PCB to connect to the modules, as well as the charging pad. I don't know how the other boards from Angry Meow are put together, but you can clearly see that they are using a similar approach here. However, one of the things I really admired about the compact touch is just how beautiful the insides were. Everything was machined to perfection, and the way the parts were put together was just wonderful. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't the case here, but I do feel like there is a difference, and maybe I'm confusing design with precision, although there are no gaps here, nothing is misaligned, but I just somehow feel that this is just not as good as the compact touch was. It has to be said, though, that I really like that board. In general, I was very happy to find out that disassembling and assembling can be done without any issues or difficulty. Yes, the board has a lot more parts, but nothing was weird or was done with clamps or glue or anything else that would make life unnecessarily difficult. I think it sounds pretty good. I personally quite like it, but I must say that my unit came without any prelude stabilizers, which surprised me as the compact touch had perfect stabs that needed no work, even though I did end up replacing them. However, I've been told that this is due to the pre-release version that I got. Yours will have prelude stabs, and if they're anything like those on the compact touch, they'll be great. You've probably already forgotten about this, but at the beginning of the video I was talking about my first gaming keyboard, its specialized functionality and the advantages a board such as that one can give you. But what does this have to do with the Black Diamond? Well, it's because in the marketing materials this is the first custom board that I ever got that specifically states its purpose for gaming. Yes, the Mithril version is labeled as daily use combined with gaming use, but you won't have any advantage with the Carbon version over this one. The switches are more game-centric, yes, but can be replaced and the harder or softer typing feel is something I would say can make a difference, but is also a preference. Both boards can also be operated wired or wirelessly and use the same receiver, which conveniently has a USB-A and C plug attached to it. Now, this is the part that I wasn't able to thoroughly test, because first, I'm not a competitive gamer. I love my games, don't get me wrong, but I'm laughable at Overwatch 2 or any other fast-paced shooters. Secondly. I don't have the equipment to actually confirm the advertised 2 millisecond latency, which is very low, but most often, and I'm not saying this is the case here, the true input latency from input to reaction on screen is much higher than what the brands like to advertise, and also depends a lot on other factors, including the gear you are using. I can't tell you if this is the case here, but I would say take it with a grain of salt. This is still a 2.4 GHz dongle, which is great, much better than Bluetooth, which the board also has, but if you truly want to be competitive, just plug it in. The other area where I would say a gaming keyboard can give you a competitive advantage is with software features. Unfortunately, this is where the Black Diamond is lacking the most. Using Angry Meow's software gives you limited customization options. Apart from remapping and setting up layers, there isn't much you can do. Yes, you can create your own RGB animations, which is a neat feature, but it doesn't help you with gaming. The software itself is also a bit of a hassle to use, the web interface seems a bit dated, and you have to download the JSON file and manually import it into the software. Ironically, the Compact Touch, a board that tried to improve productivity with its touch bar, actually achieved exactly that. By leveraging your underused thumb, you can remap the arrow keys to do something else in games, like switching weapons or activating skills. It gave you quick access to specialized functions, although with a bit of a workaround. Newfan must have had the same idea too, as their Field 75 gaming keyboard has exactly that thump buttons, which I think is brilliant, although I've never tried one of those, so I can't say for sure. One of the, if not best, gaming keyboards on the market right now is the Wooding 60HE, a board I have never tried but comes with high recommendations from this guy, and he knows a thing or two about boards and gaming. Its most groundbreaking feature is the ability to change the actuation point 
via software on a per key basis, which is insane. Even Razer tried to copy this, but didn't succeed. So is this just a failed attempt then? Not exactly. Let's try to ignore what this board doesn't have and instead look at what it does have. Subjectively speaking, it's a very unique and let's call it polarizing design. It's made really, really well, offers customizability, although not as much as its distant relatives. You have a leaf spring mounting system, but you don't get the adjustable ones like on the AFA or Compact Touch, but you do get leaf springs. I like leaf springs. The feel is great and I'd compare the typing experience to riding in a Cadillac, more so than a Lamborghini, which probably feels like riding on a plank of wood. A Caddy feels like driving a boat, I think. I've never driven either, but this is what I would imagine both cars would feel like. What I want to say is that the black diamond is incredibly comfortable to type on. During long office days and big keyboard video scripts, it was a pleasure to use. It was just comfortable. Never did my hands get tired and I didn't need the afro, but it is there and I think it looks great with it. So it has design, subjectively, build quality and comfort going for it. but. What else? Well, if it doesn't change by the time this video goes up, the price is supposed to be 240 US for the base and 290 for the advanced versions. If the base version of this board, that is the one without the wireless charger and the headlights, is actually 240, this board isn't that bad of a deal. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's affordable or even cheap. $240 for a keyboard is a lot of money, but if you think about what you're gonna get, it's good. I don't think there has ever been a leaf spring equipped board at this price point, let alone a 75% one with a unique design that doesn't just resemble a brick. Don't forget about the included switches and keycaps too, which when bought separately can cost up to 200 bucks. And these are great too by the way, the grayscale double shot PPT set looks wonderful and is a great fit. The letters are crisp and this might just be one of those few cases where I wasn't immediately tempted to replace them. Look. This is probably not going to revolutionize or even make a noticeable dent in the gaming community. It's not a great gaming keyboard, but it is a really, really good regular keyboard. And if it goes on sale with the estimated price, it's for once not outrageous. And even if it doesn't outperform other gaming keyboards, you can still play games on this just fine. You just have to rely a little more on your own skill. Hey, thank you so much for watching the latest keyboard excursion. I honestly think this is a really great board. Whatever the future holds for Dry Studio, if they continue on this path, I'm really curious to see what they do next. I also want to thank them for letting me check out this early version. And don't forget, since this is, well, an early version, there might be parts that differ from the one that ends up shipping. I'll have all the necessary links down in the description below. There will be an Indiegogo campaign for this board, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, be safe and sound out there in the dangerous world of gaming, and as always, see you in the next one. Bye.